Well, we got a, a new face for the old saw, and it's in that box. Well, it was in that box. It ain't, that's not it. The new face. Mm -hmm. Now that is the new face. <laughs> so, hey, this is the new pretty face. <laughs> Just got it in uh, the other day quickly put it together and I want to talk about the price, the features and I guess the reason I bought this uh, particular table saw. It's a brand new item. The company's fairly young too so a lot of new things going on. The first and foremost feature that caught my interest on this particular saw was the size of this table. It's a good size uh, table for I guess we'll call it a hybrid. It's a pretty good size table. I like the size. Another feature about the saw that I really liked was it has a place to store the fence. Uh, most of the saws I've had in the past, they had no place for the fence. And also it has storage for the cable. That's pretty handy too. Without a doubt, uh, it also has this uh, a pusher stick that is included with it. And that's pretty handy. I do like the idea. I'm seeing a lot of the pusher sticks are starting to come with uh, quite a few saws. So I'm not gonna say that that's a big you know, deal breaker. Right. So let's talk about uh, the extensions here. This is actually the left side of the saw, but you can loosen these off the knobs and you can pull this out to extend it for further material or have it right up tight. Hmm. In order to get wood to slide over the uh, table surface, even if you have a cast iron, or in this case, this is aluminum, uh, always put a little bit of the old Johnson paste wax down and wax out, sort of like you're doing a surfboard, I guess, from California. Wax out the top, and that way wood will slide really nicely through and not, there, hopefully there won't be any hang-ups or friction to cause you to you know, mess up your work. Uh, this is just something that I've had on every table saw I've ever owned, so I gotta show it to you, right? Another interesting fact is the control package. Uh, the good part is you've got an on and an off switch. The only bad news is you don't have like a slap switch where you can just reach down and slap it real quick to shut it off. And again, this is sort of something that you know might be a little bit of a concern. So the next test, obviously, don't really have to necessarily cut wood, but I put the blade at 45 degrees to the uh, surface of the saw. And of course, the simple test is get a speed square and put it in here and just see how 45 is it and as you can see it's uh here's the thing and I, I don't know whether this will bother me in the future or not right now the saw blade is laid over as far as the as it will reach on the control unit or the package that they give you here so in other words I can't go over 45 but measuring it with the speed square here very carefully coming up to that blade and checking for you know hairline or whatever she looks like she's pretty much right on so i won't run wood through to prove the 45 there's no point in the same manner uh we'll do the same thing but this time we're just going to go straight up and bring the speed square in and just check the blade and see if she's a hair over or a hair under and uh, right now the blade is showing to be well, that's actually pretty, yeah, that's pretty much straight right there. Another uh, unusual uh, part of this saw is the fence. And to explain the fence, uh, it does not go in this track and slide back and forth. It just doesn't. It actually uh, is rubber backed in here. It actually sort of clips in here and locks. So it's like if I put it in like that, I don't virtually have to push this down. It's already pretty tight. Now, when I do that, obviously it's, it's locked into place. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for safety, I always recommend you use all the guards and everything supplied with any tool. Uh, unfortunately, my lifestyle says no, no guards. So I take mine off and uh, pretty much throw that in the trash because, you know, I don't want it. Another item that comes, speaking of safety, is this knife guide back here. And it sits in here in the saw like this, up in behind the blade. And it would be all right if it wasn't for the fact that it's higher than the blade, which automatically sort of stops me 
from making the cuts that I need. So this was really uh, not what I could use. I mean, just this is just unusable. So I had to remove it. On the back side of the Tac Life Saw, uh, they actually add these in, and there's two of them in the kit with a couple of bolts so that the saw can't be, say, knocked over if you're pushing hard on a piece of lumber or something. Uh, my feet ran into this and I reached up to grab the saw before I fell, so uh, this is something that I guess it'll, it'll depend on the, uh, the buyer as to whether you want these on there or not. Uh, they're just a real simple, easy bolt-on, so we're taking those off because I don't want them. Okay. So these are the leftovers. Uh, just, you know, throw them in a the corner for now. Another item that came with the saw is this really funky kind of miter. Uh, it's a very short piece here. It is a T-type fixture, which I uh, was not happy about. Didn't realize it was going to come with a T-type uh, line. But I did like this aluminum fence I include with it that can be slid further over so that you can get a little bit closer to your work and to the saw blade itself. So you can, you know, cut something fairly tight if you're, if that's what you're, you know, if that's what you're after. Uh, this is another small minor feature for me because I, I sawdust just flies everywhere But it does have a sawdust port here that you can put a you know a vacuum on and suck most of the sawdust away from the machine Let's face it. You're gonna still end up with some uh, <clears throat> some sawdust Ultimately before I removed all these pieces that I just showed you I did do a square cut with the saw with the fence here ran it through and, and cut turned, cut, turn, cut, and then of course took my speed square and lined it up. Now remarkably, um, I hate to say it, the Ryobi, at least in the past, was not able to pass that simple test. It was always off a hair, or off a little bit. Uh, the Tack Life, although it may seem somewhat as a cheaper saw in the industry, the accuracy is actually, well, it's dead on. I can't you know, I can't criticize or say anything about that because I checked uh, for squareness and she's dead on. The uh, saw came with a 24 blade, which has uh, carbon carbide teeth on it here. So I'm okay with the blade. It's a general purpose blade for just some soft wood or whatever. It will do the job, so uh, the blade is okay. And let's face it, we can all buy uh, whatever blade we want to use on any saw. So the Tack Life doesn't necessarily have to be this particular blade. Now, there is a warning, and I'm gonna discuss that probably maybe in the future, we'll come back to it, but the arbor size on this particular saw is 30 millimeter. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the world, but it means if you're gonna go buy a, a uh, aftermarket blade, you need to look at that arbor size and make sure you have a 30 millimeter arbor blade. Another cool feature with the tack light saw was this right here. This actually is larger than the one that I had on my Ryobi. So I have a little bit more uh, power or swing here with this to raise and lower my uh, blade. Also, it, have a, it has a nicer lock. I like this lock better. The Ryobi's lock was more of a handle that you pulled down. And from day one, it never really took a good bite, so it, it didn't really lock at 45 properly. This one here, obviously, you can turn that until you get it nice and tight. If you lock it into 45 degree angle, 30, whatever, you've got a good, you know, you've got it. The uh, locks here are good. The slides are very good. Let's see if I can tip her up a little bit there without tearing something up. These uh, sliding pins that they've got here, uh, you have to take the screws off, slide them in, put the screws, put the lock screws back in, obviously. But overall, the build, really, it's a light saw. It's not bad. It's big. It's, I like the size. The size uh, really, really did uh, catch my interest. So the saw runs at about 4,800 RPM. Most of them do run at 5,000. So we're, we lost 200, which is not a whole, wow, big deal. In fact, a slightly slower speed cut might even work to your advantage somehow. Uh, like I said, the blade that came with it is a general purpose blade, but it's not bad. It's, it does do the trick for basic, you know, just cutting some old pine two by fours, whatever. The uh, long range plan is to order uh, a couple of good quality blades that have the 30 millimeter arbor. And uh, that way we can really get into this. The other thing I really like 
and it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, unlike any saw I've had in the past, there's no well here, so nothing's gonna get caught. So that's actually a plus, that's a good feature. The other thing I really liked was this whole plate right here, it comes off and that gives you a ton of access to that blade. So if this was able to be set up with like dados or something blades, that would be a really big plus. And maybe in the future we'll see that because right now I didn't see anything on the market out there for that, but I think it's coming. Uh, now, on that same line, I want to talk about making a sled for this saw. And what I would do is the same thing I did, I did with that Craftsman I had a while back. I'll just undo these and just show it to you. But uh, what I did with the Craftsman, because of this T, I don't like having the T in there, but a lot of the manufacturers are really showing up with that now. So what I did with my sled was I actually used the outside here and created my rails, plus my, you know, I used MD, MDF, I guess it was at the time, and then created the sled that I could use in the saw. And the sled will, let's face it, that is going to, with a good blade and a good sled, what's under here doesn't have to say uh, Craftsman, DeWalt, uh, Grizzly, Jet, whatever. It doesn't have to say that. It's still a saw, a blade running, good quality, a sled that's set up right. So you're probably gonna get a pretty good cut. And any woodworker will tell you the uh, table saw is kind of part of the central core of woodworking. It's, it's something you, you pretty much have to have it in your shop. Yes, you can get around it. I can get around it. I have other saws, but I still like to have a table saw. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. The tack life was uh, actually below budget, so that was really a big plus right in itself. And I thought, well, if I can live with the saw and I'm happy with these features, which I am, uh, and if the saw will last a long time, which will, well, there's only one way to find that out. Uh, you know, call me 20 years from now and see if this thing is still running. See if I'm still running. <laughs> if the saw will do the trick for the, the next uh, number of years and have good life in the motor, the bearings, that kind of thing, then you probably got your money's worth. Uh, Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools this week and stopping by to visit and see what we're up to. Uh, new table saw and I sort of like it. Uh, it's like I said, between the price and the features, uh, I think we're gonna say it's a pretty good saw. Hopefully it'll last a lifetime. Mm. Bye for now.